sure before we get going that our stream is up on YouTube and it is well good Monday Monday morning we're not there yet good Sunday morning everybody I'm meteorologist Nick Kelly I'm keeping an eye on these thunderstorms that have ramped up over the past few hours and even watching some storms that are trying to sneak in from the northwest from the uh, Kansas Turnpike and even from the I-70 corridor so Let's just dive right in and see what's going on. So far, if you've been seeing it, the skies to the north, they may look ominous, but for the most part, thankfully, their bark is worse than their bite. We've got a severe thunderstorm watch covering the entire area until we hit 4 o'clock this afternoon, and this is primarily what we were expecting. This cold front coming in does not scream like a big tornado threat. In fact, the odds of that, when I looked at the uh, watch this morning as it came out, it was very low probability. So it's, if you ever read those uh, watches from the Storm Prediction Center, it's only like a 2% risk. That is very low by their standards and even our standards too. So something that we'll still watch, It's not the threat is not zero, but it is extremely low. We're just going to really focus on, oh, let's say uh, wind and hail. By, by far and away the biggest issues here and the issues that Doug and I were expecting as these storms uh, try to ramp up and even the ones that move in from the northwest. Um, off to the side here, I'm pulling up the Storm Prediction Center just to make sure we've got everything squared away on this watch. Uh, yeah, we've got to keep an eye out for any individual cells. They'll certainly be capable of some large hail, but so far as we break down the latest warnings that we have here, they are only out for half dollar size, so that's about an inch and a quarter in diameter. So far, the wind gusts are pushing 60. We'll have to see, based on how things look right now, if our environment will still be strong enough or unstable enough to maybe lead to higher wind gusts with any additional storms that either develop on top of the region or work in from the northwest. Plus, I also have the National Weather Service chat up over here uh, just to make sure that we are apprised of and making sure that we're staying aware of any uh, severe weather reports should any materialize and come in. But let's just go ahead and dive in with the radar here because we do have some warnings to go over. And you can see right away we have just this cluster of moderate to heavy rainfall from the Veda let's say south of Fort Scott, south of Uniontown, south of US 54 in Bourbon County, working back towards Chanute, uh, close to Neotiche and Fredonia, and then working back down near Independence, Parsons, and a good portion of Crawford County, and even working between, let's say, Nevada and Jasper. We'll see if that can work over the atmosphere a little bit, but if I actually show you a quick loop over the past hour, you can see how everything's moving along from the northwest to the southeast. And if I extend this time lapse out a little farther, let's say the past three hours, we can get a good idea of how things have evolved. Again, like Doug and I have been saying with the past uh, few uh, weather events that we've dealt with, whether it's just regular storms or a severe threat, the future track that we show you, it's not always going to be right. No projection is exactly correct, especially when it comes to radar output. But it does, it did, however, give us the right idea that we would have storms coming through this morning, and hopefully this will work over the atmosphere a bit to help potentially lower our severe threat as we go into the afternoon ahead of us. But let's put the pause on the radar here, and let's start diving into some of these individual storms. Let's start with the big one square away that has been trying to uh, ramp up a little bit in terms of strength. So I want to ch change this up so I show you just the radar output from the Springfield um, Airport, or the uh, Weather Service office outside of the uh, Springfield uh, Airport on the northwest side of the city. This is our first severe thunderstorm warning that we have for extreme southeastern Barton. Uh, the eastern two-thirds of Jasper County. Um, it's not an issue for Newton County right now, but then you can see how the warning clips northwestern Vernon, or northwestern Vernon, pardon me. We've got northwestern Lawrence northwest of Mount Vernon. That's where the Vernon comes in. And then we've got a good portion of central and southwestern uh, Dade County in southwestern Missouri. If we pull up the specs here, if I can find that in my 
array of 5,000 different weather tools and maps. Uh, this storm, so far, just capable of uh, ping pong ball size hail. That's an inch and a half in diameter and 60 mile per hour wind gusts. So are these the strongest storms that Doug and I have encountered? No, not really, but over the past 30 to 40 minutes, we have seen this uh, tick upward in terms of strength. So it looks like we're getting a stronger updraft into the storm, um, allowing it to reach more unstable air aloft, colder air aloft, and that stronger updraft is trying to create some larger hailstones before it can come on down. Uh, so far, not seeing anything too surprising right now, but we actually did have uh, from the weather service uh, reports coming in that the roof was blown off near the Alps grocery and the power line was snapped by a semi uh, passing through I think the south side of Pittsburgh. So we'll check on that in a moment, but first let me make sure that we're all squared away here with this warning. Let's make sure that we're keeping the hail sizes relatively in check here. And you can see how the system is pegging some of the larger hail within the heavier cores of that thunderstorm. And if we try to get a specific hail size here, well, that doesn't do us any good. So let's try this way. There we go. Uh, so far, the system might be suggesting half dollar size hail, but even by the uh, computer algorithms that we're using here, that's about an inch and a quarter in diameter, 1.25 inches. So whether we're seeing hailstones from an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half, half dollar, the ping pong ball size hail, that is certainly severe criteria if you go by just the hail sizes alone. And as far as velocity goes, thankfully we're not concerned about anything trying to rotate, but if I try to switch the radar up temporarily here, I want to quickly see um, if we're seeing just simple straight velocity readings that could suggest some high wind gusts. I'm going to change a few things up just so I got the clearest picture. Um, if you want to twist my arm around, you could say some velocity readings here, taking storm motion into account with this product. Um, it's not looking particularly impressive. Maybe some of these brighter greens, we're seeing maybe 45 mile per hour uh, winds, but that's at a certain height as the beam goes away from the radar side. So it is possible that maybe some gusts around 45 to 50, 55 or maybe 60 could potentially try to mix down to the surface. That's why the severe thunderstorm warning is out for that uh, part of the region. So, before we check on the other storms, let me switch back to reflectivity, do a quick double check on the speed. Uh, southeast of 40, that seems reasonable. These have been ranging in speeds between 40 and 50 miles per hour, so we'll go with 40 miles per hour as we get this latest storm track on here. Uh, we'll take the leading edge of it, take the southeast, uh, we'll say over the next 30 minutes anyway that that track would take this storm outside of the current severe thunderstorm warning polygon but given how this is going to continue to work into an environment where we've seen temperatures warm very quickly late this morning into the upper 70s to near 80 wouldn't be surprised if this either maintained its strength or maybe try to, to strengthen up a little more uh, Carthage 1049 if you're not dealing with any of the uh, outflow winds from this storm you're definitely going to get in on some heavier rain and maybe some small hail within the next three minutes or so pleasant valley at 1051 loressel at uh, 1054 we've got then stott city at 11 o'clock on the dot mount vernon by 1104 and then working outside of the uh, severe thunderstorm morning polygon we have halton at 1106 freistad at 1110 and wentworth at 1112 so we'll continue to keep an eye on this as we move along and just changing up a few more things here let's take off uh, the nearest site and let's whittle down these radar sites 
just within our neck of the woods here. Again, we've got moderate to maybe some heavy pockets of rain stretching from Lamar, Pittsburgh, Minden Mines, up to Nevada, Fort Scott, along the south of 54 in Bourbon County, uh, much of Crawford County from uh, 126 north. That is certainly a good deal of moderate rain. Hopefully that can work over the atmosphere a little bit. We've got all of uh, Neosho County, a good portion of Labette, especially in the northern and northwestern parts of Labette, with some moderate to heavy rain. Um, eastern Montgomery County with some moderate to heavy rainfall and mainly moderate rain for uh, parts of Wilson County as well, especially once we work east of Fredonia and east of the US 400. Let's look at our other severe thunderstorm warning that we have. Oh wait, let me make sure uh, that uh, the storm working toward the Lake of the Ozark still clipping St. Clair County. We'll check on that in a moment, but I want to focus on this severe thunderstorm warning in Greenwood County first because given how this is working into our area with the rate it's going, this will be the next uh, big storm in the short term to keep a close eye on. So if we look at it just from Wichita's perspective at the lowest level, you can clearly see the bright reflectivity core. So definitely very evident of some heavy rainfall and certainly some hail picking up. Again, like the other storms working near the Joplin area, this has an inch and a quarter in diameter. So we're talking about half dollar size hail with the storm in Greenwood County, maybe some hailstones trying to push near an inch and a half, maybe ping pong ball size hail. And the wind gusts here, not too impressive for now at 60 miles per hour. I will say though, it's moving southeast 35, just like the other storm, we'll do our due diligence here. Make sure first that hail sizes are staying in check. And for the life of me, I have no idea why this bug keeps popping up. So you'll have to pardon me for that uh, random legend that keeps on popping up sometimes. We'll take it off just like that. And we are seeing some of those um, hail returns trying to push up there. And that's just according to our computer algorithms alone. So if we want to try and peg what the largest potential hail sizes would be, it certainly looks like uh, we've got a lot of quarters let's say mainly to the west of Eureka, but with the core north of Eureka, maybe trying to push near half dollar size hail. So that certainly checks out with the way that these storms have been behaving as of this late uh, Sunday morning. And so far, rotation, not seeing anything. That's not what we're concerned about for the time being. Something we'll still watch, but this is not showing any uh, velocity returns that might suggest rotation leading to a tornado. Thankfully, we're not seeing that. Again, that threat's looking relatively low, if not very low. Um, with that said, though, you need to keep a close eye on this storm nonetheless, because it is on the move toward the southeast, and with the way things are going, it would not surprise me at all if we see uh, new severe thunderstorm warnings go out that could clip parts of Woodson, a good deal of Wilson County, and maybe um, eastern and northeastern parts of Elk County on the Kansas side. So let's do our due diligence, if I can ever say that word correctly here, uh, before we check out on the other storms and see what the setup's looking like overall. And maybe we'll just stick with this stream a bit here. So if you're wandering as well, for anybody jumping in late, we'll just keep going through things here because that's the beauty of YouTube Live. We can go on for as long as we can, and we can just chat away about what's going on here as long as these storms continue to behave. If they ramp up a little bit, we'll have to hop on air just to make sure that we let as many people as possible know. I will say, though, it looks like the Weather Service, looks like they canceled a severe thunderstorm warning for Greenwood County first, but I know what they're doing. They first had that warning out at the top of the hour, the top of the 10 o'clock hour, clipping the northwestern corner of the county, northwest of Eureka. Clearly, that storm was out, excuse me, of that polygon. So, no surprise that Wichita did the right thing, of course, and uh, dropped that warning since that is no longer a threat. So, the big show in terms of the storm in Greenwood County is right on top of Eureka. And continuing to perform as we expected. Southeast at 35, um, and again, half dollar size hail, wind gusts near 60. I swear, I just looked up the speed of this and sometimes it just goes right in and out of my head. But we're good, we've got the speed here, Southeast 35. So we'll take the leading edge, 
We're talking about the leading edge of some of the gusts near 60 and certainly leading edge of the heaviest rain and the uh, hail cores that could push the hail sizes up to half dollar size at the very least. We'll take this out over the next hour because it would not surprise me at all again if we get additional severe thunderstorm warnings clipping parts of uh, Wilson, Woodson, and even parts of Elk County based on how this track is. Maybe the northeastern parts of Elk County, but we'll see as we go along here, working toward Climax at 1056, Quincy at 1102, then Toronto, um, working in the extreme western Woodson County at uh, 1109. We have Vertigris at 1121, Webster at 1124, Buffalo. Kansas at 1135, then Fredonia around 1141, and close to Cedar, Kansas by 1150. Let's back things up a bit, and I want to see if potentially uh, we've gotten any damage reports so far. Um, we've got every product that we have checked here, so it looks like the Weather Service is trying to confirm if there was indeed um, any damage to at least a few parts of the Pittsburgh area. Let's see. Uh, the Weather Service is still trying to confirm if indeed the roof was potentially blown off of the Alps or near Alps Grocery and then maybe a snapped power line um, somewhere in the city of Pittsburgh. But as far as official storm reports, uh, we've got uh, 1.3 inch diameter hail. This was relayed by law enforcement as they were in Barton County near the small town of Oakton uh, 44 minutes ago. That's back at 1010. So you're definitely talking about half dollar to ping pong ball size hail. Fits right within that range. Certainly verifies that warning continuing on toward the south and east. And we might have to double check that again because supposedly the hail sizes are continuing to increase uh, with the storm working through. Uh, Dade, Jasper, and Lawrence counties. But just wanted to quickly see what else we may have on the way in. I am watching uh, these severe thunderstorm warnings. Uh, let's just be sure here. Uh, there's northeastern Chase County. That's 60 and quarters. That's not looking impressive, but the warning for northern Lyon County, that's moving southeast at 50. And even though the radar looks impressive from the Topeka site, uh, so far, just 60 mile per hour winds and quarter size hail, but it's too moving. It too is there. We go moving to the southeast at 50 miles per hour. So let's just make sure that we have everything in check here. Zoom back in so we can get the expiration time. There we go. And it looks like the storm is trying to work out of the warning, so it wouldn't surprise me if Topeka issues another warning downstream to cover parts of uh, I-35 from Emporia to the east and maybe clipping northern parts of a few of our very far northern uh, communities in our viewing area. So let's say southeast at 50. And I think that projection is looking valid. I say that track looks reasonable. Uh, let's also take this box off and move this over to the side, if it'll let me. Um, Emporia, if it's not on top of you right now, it pretty much will be within the next minute. Uh, Lebel 1103, uh, Williamsburg by 1117, Burlington by 1125, as it starts creeping into our far, far northern parts of the viewing area. Westphalia at 1133 and Garnett at 1138. Not an depressive storm for now, but we are going to keep an eye on this as well. So with that said, let's go back to the severe storm working across southwestern Missouri because the Weather Service in Springfield has put out a new severe thunderstorm warning for, goodness, who do we have here? We have Eastern Newton County. We've got Lawrence County, Barry County in our viewing area. Then just to the east, we have the warning clipping parts of Northwestern Christian, Northern Stone, and Southwestern Green County. So it's a sizable severe thunderstorm warning polygon in terms of real estate, but certainly valid with the way that the storm continues to show a strengthening trend, not only as the storm edges closer to the radar, but as this is working into an area still where you have just unstable, warm, moist, humid air feeding into the storm. So 
you of course you give it that type of air it is going to keep going if not trying to strengthen up a little bit more uh, the weather service here is suggesting that the hail sizes continue to trend upward quite a bit so we need to keep a very close eye on this because the hail sizes might be approaching two inches in diameter we're talking about hailstones in some instances trying to push over golf ball size so if you haven't done so already i'm also going to push a warning out from a new computer over here or from our other computer oh and we've got doug hetty chiming in as well uh let's see here and that takes care of that so i am actually going to do this i'll actually push the warning from here but I will let you know what I'm seeing as we get this storm track out over the course of the next hour. And this could also serve as a really good heads up if you know anybody out on the waters near Table Rock Lake. So this severe thunderstorm warning for those of you that are just joining in, this is a brand new one. Um, again, it's clipping. Let me make sure I get the official text squared away here. Eastern Newton County, uh, Northwestern Christian, outside of the area, only just Northern Stone, Southwestern Green, but Northern Berry and all of Lawrence County. This is a storm that we're keeping a very close eye on because just when we started the stream, you saw how the hail size has started out between quarter and half dollar size. But as the storm continues to work through a very favorable environment for it to strengthen and maintain its strength, we've actually seen the hail potential try to increase as it continues southeastward at 50 miles per hour. So I am just continuing the live stream on here while I push this warning out to our other social media channels here. So be sure that you follow us any way you can on this uh, you, for YouTube. We're going to keep on doing this as long as we've got severe weather events lined up for the next several weeks. So be sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and be sure you ring the bell so you get updates and notifications on both new videos that come from us throughout the period of the day and for future live streams, including this one. If you are already subscribed, you already have that bell rang. Okay, so this severe thunderstorm warning again for Newton, Lawrence, Barry, and Vernon. No, pardon me. Wait, Newton, Barry, and Lawrence. Ah. <sighs> Sometimes I forget what it's like running on five hours of sleep here, but we're good. We are focused solely on the task at hand here. Uh, let's have this warning out until the noon hour or the non hour, if you want to take my typo here verbatim. Uh, let's see here. Uh, threats, 60 mile per hour winds and two inch diameter hail and that's moving southeast at 50 pushing this to all of my or all of our facebook pages my twitter doug's twitter the station's twitter and our instagram accounts as well and you've heard all that right we're all over social media, not just YouTube, but we're, on, of course, on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, plenty of ways to follow us to be sure that you get the latest warning information. Now let's talk about timing here. Monette at 11.12, the leading edge of the storm will come on in with at least 60 mile per hour wind gusts, but the big takeaway for the time being, since this cell, if you will, is on its own, the heavier cores are trying to suggest updrafts going really high up into the sky and get some large hail to come on down as a result. So we're watching that very carefully for you over Republic by 1118, Wheaton by 1128, Castle 1137. But here is where we want your help if you know anybody around Table Rock Lake if they're trying to get out on the water. Kimberling City at 1147, 
Branson by 1154. If this trend continues, we've got the storm at this strength, either maintaining a strength or trying to strengthen even a little more, moving toward the southeast, it would not surprise me at all if we get official severe thunderstorm warnings from the National Weather Service that will clip southeastern parts of Barry County, southern parts of Stone, and southwestern parts of Taney County. That would include the Table Rock Lake area. So if you know anybody that might be out on the lakes, you want to give them a big heads up. They might not need to get out of the water yet, but certainly as we get closer toward the noon hour, or at least by 1145, that's when for sure we would like them to be off of the water, off of the boats, and on drier ground, and of course, away from any metal docks. Uh, so that is something we're going to keep a very close eye on. So with that said, I want to take a close look and see if we are seeing an increase in the hail sizes and the hail potential on our end here. And sure enough, we're trying to see those hail sizes spike on up. So if we go for a tighter look at the last skin that we had here, the, the, the uh, larger hail cores right around the Miller area near the intersection of Missouri 39 and Missouri 96. And if you want to take these radar readings at face value, yeah, that verifies. Ping pong ball size hail from our system, from what the National Weather Service is seeing, so certainly worthy of severe thunderstorm warning. So ping pong ball size hail, that's about an inch and a half in diameter, so it wouldn't surprise me if you get a couple larger hailstones trying to th get thrown into the mix as well. So that is so far the strongest storm that we have on the board but on the plus side though we have not seen anything nefarious work through the Joplin area. Thankfully this storm is passing east of the area. In fact the closest it got to the Joplin metro per se is pretty much the Carthage area but Carthage you are pretty much all clear from this storm for the time being but you've got some additional light to moderate rainfall trying to sneak in as well. I did want to check on that severe thunderstorm uh, warning, at least this cluster of severe thunderstorms working toward the Lake of the Ozarks because if we back this view up just a little bit and pardon me, I'll take off our toolbar here, you can see how this came in not severe as it was working through Lynn and Bates County just to, on the outskirts of our area, but you can see how as you continue to strengthen, we got the weather service out of Kansas City and Springfield posting warnings from Henry County around Clinton, working back down just to the northeast of Nevada, skirting the northern sides of Stockton Lake, but that's when the southern parts of that storm continue to weaken. And now we've got uh, this line of storms bearing down on the Lake of the Ozarks, uh, approaching Canton already, maybe pushing near Osage Beach as well. And even as you work south from the lake, you are looking at a potential for some severe activity um, working into uh, parts of Laclede County, uh, close to Lebanon and Conway near the I-44 corridor. So with this storm, looks to be behaving for the most part, at least compared to the storm working to the east of Joplin and right ahead near Table Rock. Yeah, this is not looking very impressive now. 60 mile per hour wind gusts, barely meeting severe criteria. And the hail sizes have really trended downward. For the most part though, we've seen the hail sizes with the storm at its strongest when you can see these uh, brighter uh, reflectivity values here. So just quarter to maybe uh, half dollar size hail, but less in the way of pinks and magentas, more in the way of the usual yellow, oranges, and reds, suggesting mainly heavy rainfall and maybe some hail sizes trying to push up the penny size. That's three quarters of an inch in diameter. And funny enough, that used to be the criteria for severe thunderstorm warnings. Yet, uh, back when I was a kid, penny size hail was considered severe enough, but thankfully with recent studies and to cut down on putting out too many severe thunderstorm warnings, the Weather Service uh, across much of the country, in fact, the entire country, raise that criteria where we consider at the very least quarter size hail severe enough to potentially cause some at least light damage. So the only reason why this storm is severe heading toward the Lake of the Ozarks is for 60 mile per hour wind gusts and we'll see if that can even hold on as it ventures toward the east. Uh, what was the speed on that again? Let me just double check for my uh, clarity as well. Uh, southeast at 25 so this is not moving very fast. So what we're going to do here 
just so we can give just everybody that you know that might be from Conway to Lebanon up to the Lake of the Ozarks. Let's just take this out over the next hour. So just in case, because the warning does expire at 1115 and it's up to the weather service in Springfield to determine whether or not this is still strong enough to maintain an additional severe thunderstorm warning. Um, let's see here. Sunrise Beach at 11:11, Camdenton in Camden County, Mid Missouri at 11:20, Lake Ozark and Osage Beach around the Lake of the Ozarks between 11:30 and 11:33, 11:35. But on the south end, we've got this storm one to work in Lebanon by 11:42, Tuscumbia at 11:51, Evergreen by noon, and Richland at 12:07. That's for I want to say that's extreme western parts of Pulaski County, if I remember where Richland is correctly. I should know because I passed through that part of 44 so many times in the years that I've been here. So that sounds about right. So everybody through the rest of, if you know anybody around the Lake of the Ozarks, go, going down to Laclede County and western parts of Pulaski County close to Fort Leonardwood, you might want to give them a heads up just to keep an eye on this storm. It certainly looks less impressive now than it did over the, compared to about an hour or two hours ago. But something that they'll want to keep an eye on. Um, just to make sure that we are keeping everything else in check. Looks as though, well, thankfully the hail sizes with our uh, storm working over Mount Vernon is coming down a little bit. That's always encouraging. And for some of you uh, weather nerds out there like myself, sometimes you might want to catch, oh, uh, let's say, I thought I selected my telestrating tool. You might see a radar return that might look like this, suggesting maybe a bit of a hook trying to form here. Again, we're not really concerned about a tornado threat, and we can just make doubly sure by pulling up storm relative velocities in here. Yeah, we are not seeing any tight rotation whatsoever. But one good reason why we might see the radar return look like this, if this is indeed a bit of a hook on the southern side of this storm, it's not because of low level rotation, in this case, trying to produce a tornado. That's not what we're dealing with here. But potentially we have some stronger shear today compared to the other day and better dynamics of loss. So this is suggesting to me mid-level rotation. This is where mid-level rotation combined with the strong updraft is trying its best to either maintain the hail sizes around ping pong ball size or an inch and a half in diameter, or if you can get a stronger updraft or a stronger mid-level rotation that won't work its way down to the surface, it's going to make sure that it keeps those hail sizes up. And one of the many things that we'll keep an eye on as this storm continues on its journey toward the south and to the east. And it looks as though we did get a uh, wind report here. Oh, didn't mean to do that. I wanted to check on this here. We've got Large tree branches down on Highway 96 between the Villa and Miller. That was estimated at 1055 based on uh, the time uh, estimated from the uh, previous radar returns. So, oh, and I'm checking in with Doug as well here. We're both keeping an eye on these storms and we definitely want everybody to be aware that that storm wants to make a run for Table Rock Lake. So we just want to reiterate again that everybody, if you know anybody that might be wanting to venture out on Table Rock Lake, they're going to want to hold off on that because this storm, if it continues on that trajectory toward the southeast, it is going right for Table Rock Lake with the way things are looking. Let's see, and again, I'm pausing for a moment because I'm in communications with Doug here. We're both watching this storm very closely here. He's watching things from his end back home. I'm the one t on duty today, but hey, if there's severe weather around, we are both on it like we've always been in the times that I've been here since. Okay, that takes care 
of that matter for the time being. And again, this is the only wind damage report that I've seen so far as we get back to uh, the current radar trends at hand here. So let's see if we can actually match that up ourselves here. And yeah, that looks about right. Looks like strong enough wind gusts and maybe some saturated ground still because keep in mind too, uh, like we're still trying our best to dry out as much as we can from all the rain that we've seen. That period of way too much rain within the past uh, week and a half to two weeks. Uh, we are definitely uh, not surprised that even if we get some minor wind gusts between 50 and up to 60, which is severe criteria, it could knock down some large tree branches and maybe a couple of trees as well. But so far as wind damage is concerned, uh, just large tree branches down on 96. Uh, let me just double check to make sure we got the towns right. Between Avila and Miller in Lawrence County. That lines up with the trend that we've been seeing here. Uh, we'll, we'll take another quick look at the radar here just to make sure that we're catching up to date with the storm. Uh, working through uh, now maybe extreme northeastern parts of Newton County, but the main crux of this storm is working through pretty much all of Lawrence County, getting ready to work into Barry County from Pierce City, Milnet, Aurora, and then you've got the storm ready to work also into southwestern Greene County around Republic, uh, Christian County, and you've got Galena, Missouri. That's not a typo. There is a Galena, Missouri, but by that point, you're talking about areas in northern Stone County. And again, when we start talking about central, southern Barry County, Stone County, Taney County, any storm coming in from the northwest, it's going to make a run toward Table Rock Lake. So it's worth doing again just to make sure that we give everybody, at least we do our part, to give everybody a big heads up, especially if you know anybody out around Table Rock Lake. The hail sizes on this have come down. When the warning came out, we had potential up to two inch diameter hail. That's slightly larger than golf ball size, but the wind gusts have been holding steady around 60. In this severe thunderstorm watch though, the environment is trying to get itself together out ahead of it where the wind gusts might try to increase a bit, but regardless of how the wind gusts play out, this is still a severe storm nonetheless. As long as it maintains wind speed potential of at least 60 miles per hour and ping pong ball size hail, half an inch and a half in diameter rather, um, this is going to be an issue for areas as you work closer to Branson and again, Table Rock Lake. So as long as this continues to move, uh, continues rather, to move southeast at 40, we'll take the storm track out to cover the entirety of Table Rock Lake here. Uh, Milnet at 1120, and you can see it pretty much right now it's working over Pier City. But again, Pier City, it's nothing too alarming for you, but this is certainly... Um, wind and hail. I think the strongest of the hail is working closer to Aurora instead of uh, you on top of Pier City. But Billings at 1122, Clever at 1130, Butterfield at 1139, Castle near 1150. Then we have Shell Knob, Kimberly City, and Branson. Three big cities that pop up and definitely get you closer to Table Rock Lake. If you know anybody that might be trying to venture out on the waters around Table Rock Lake, be sure you give them a big heads up. There may not be a warning per se for Table Rock Lake yet, but if this storm continues to hold its strength, a warning will come out for southeastern Barrie, the rest of Stone County, and southwestern parts of Taney County that will cover the entirety pretty much of Table Rock Lake. So if that warning, if that trend continues and that warning does come out, Shell Knob at 1155, Kimberling City at 1203, and 1213 for downtown Branson and even Branson West and Silver Dollar City as you start working toward eastern Stone and western parts of Taney County just outside of our area. Let's broaden our view out here and actually let's do a satellite radar composite here. We're going to stick with the stream a little bit so thankfully all we need to do early this morning and very early this afternoon uh, and also, I just keep glancing to the side to make sure that our uh, Skywatch Storm Alert is scrolling properly at the bottom of your TV screen. If you somehow happen to lose um, your access to this YouTube stream, 
for some reason, if your internet connection gets a little wonky, we do have the uh, severe thunderstorm warnings. And it'll watch itself scrolling along the bottom uh, part of your screen. That's still running okay. And we're just going to keep an eye on these as we go through the rest of this late morning and maybe into the early afternoon, depending on how the rest of the storms coming in are shaping up. But you can see how let's let's actually um, broaden this or expand this time, this lapse here over the past six hours. You can see how we actually strike that. I want to see go back over the past 12 hours because we actually had a few potent uh, thunderstorms work across northeastern parts of Oklahoma late last night and very early into the morning hours. I mean, this, the projections that we had were hinting at some development, but they really fired up fast with some severe thunderstorm warnings at times trying to push some large hailstones, potentially up to ping pong balls or half dollar size hail. Fortunately, though, as these storms edge closer to our immediate viewing area, and close to southwest Missouri and just stopping short of let's say Buffalo Run and Downstream Casino you had outflow coming out of those storms and anytime you get outflow like that coming out of storms it's going to cut off their support and they weakened just as we expected so for some parts of northeast Oklahoma you did get some thunderstorms this morning but that was kind of a precursor if you will to the storms that fired up to our northwest and they didn't look impressive at first, between 5 and 6 o'clock this morning. But you can tell, once we hit 7 o'clock sunrise and venturing onward, those storms really came into life with, at least what I saw, impressive shelf clouds uh, working across the Kansas City area. I saw plenty of those shots on social media. Uh, that's the storm right now that just clipped our far northeastern counties and continuing on in the weaker state. In fact, that warning's canceled now. So not the environment doesn't seem quite set up for severe weather once you work east of Springfield immediately but when you take into account that there is a severe thunderstorm watch for the rest of south central Missouri and almost to the St. Louis area if you've got folks out there it's certainly worth watching still to make sure to give them the proper heads up then the big question becomes once this cluster of storms working toward Milnet and Table Rock Lake passes on through. We get this area of moderate to heavy rainfall in southeast Kansas working over to Joplin area. The question then becomes, will the atmosphere become unstable enough for additional thunderstorms going through the rest of the afternoon? But one idea that we can possibly look at if I can find something in particular, let's look at the latest uh, one of our latest uh, future track projections here. Again, just like all of our projections here, this is not going to be exactly right. No projection is going to be exactly spot on with how the radar looks right now or how the radar looks down the road. What it does give us, though, is a pretty good idea of how things could unfold, especially in the short term. And that's what I want to focus on with this uh, version of the future track here. Looks as though the storms working through now might just be potent enough based on this because I'm seeing this for the first time as you are just to make sure that we get the most clear picture of our setup as possible in place here. Uh, looks as though once we get past this initial morning batch of rain and storms, looks like the storms trying to come at us from the northwest, they could pack a bit of a punch to it but this looks promising. Looks as though if this trend holds, we may not see much of a prolonged severe threat once we get past maybe 2 or 3 o'clock this afternoon. And hopefully by the time we get close to the uh, eclipse that we highlighted the other night, hopefully the sky is clear out enough for many of you to where once we get past our rain chances today, Mother Nature could treat us to a nice night of stargazing or eclipse gazing if you want to call it that later on tonight as the cloud cover eventually clears out because of the cold front passing on through so one more time here with this projection then i want to look at something else just to make sure that i've got at least a broad idea of how the rest of the morning goes and i'm also checking other sources here to make sure we're not missing on anything uh so 
this is what the future track wants to say it looks like now not too terribly off but it does want those storms to head near table rock lake in the short term over the next few hours something that we'll watch closely as well but this is so once these first batches of storms pass on through anything that tries to come on in during the afternoon and if anything tries to develop along the cold front looks like they could be strong but not seeing a lot of reflectivity values popping up here so fingers crossed that we will continue to see this overwork the atmosphere a bit and potentially lower any additional severe weather chances as we go through the rest of the upcoming afternoon and potentially potentially into this early uh, Sunday evening we're not quite there yet but at the very least, these storms seem to be moving along at a fairly good clip. They don't want to stick around too long. So for the short term, we're at least thankful that we're not seeing much in terms of a flooding threat. But still, if we can get a few storms to train, it doesn't take much for at least minor flooding to tick up. So that's something we're keeping an eye on as well. And I want to say in the short term here, before we go back to a radar check, I want to see if I can find um, an additional look at things here and all right we are going to ignore that because that is not initializing properly so the uh, future track that I just showed you all seems to have the best handle on how things are right now again the storms working through now they'll be strong and severe with wind and hail certainly being the biggest threats then it seems like the atmosphere might be overworked enough so that anything that could try to redevelop late this afternoon and early this evening should primarily stay below severe levels then as we go deeper into the evening and certainly going into the overnight it is going to be a clearer night a calmer night once we get uh, deeper into the system passing through and thankfully Doug is on the same thought process as I am but of course, we're still going to watch between 3 and 6 o'clock this afternoon because, again, we're, Doug and I, we're on the same page. We're thinking that the storms working through now might be enough to overwork the atmosphere. If that holds true, we're going to have a lower severe threat to watch. But still, as long as we're still ahead of that cold front, that's still going to slide on through late this afternoon and into this early evening so like i just read from him between 3 p.m and 6 p.m once this batch of storms clear out we need to watch that time frame because if that front can get some storms going and they can work into any pockets of the atmosphere that haven't been quite overturned that could be a potential for some additional strong to at the very least low end severe storms but so far we have not seen anything too nefarious or anything too unruly as we continue on through this late Sunday morning and just about 35 minutes until we hit the top of the noon hour. So unless we see any big changes here, I might take a temporary break on this stream here and hop back on within the next hour or so to give everybody a fresh heads up. But just in case, let's, for my sake as well, let's just do a recap on where we stand as of this late Sunday morning and heading into this early afternoon. The bottom line, the big bottom line overall, everybody has to contend with strong to severe storms at the very least until our severe thunderstorm watch expires, until 4 o'clock this afternoon. Thankfully, the only two warnings we have on the board right now are working across southeastern Greenwood County on the Kansas side. And looks like an additional storm really trying to flare up northwest of Fredonia and northwest of Neotache. So I actually want to change the radar site up here we're looking from the closest site that we have which is Wichita which thankfully the beam continues to get a good reading on things even this far away from the site uh, from I think the radar out of Wichita is based out of the Eisenhower Airport or very close to the airport in Wichita not Jabara but uh, the main airport in Wichita but I digress uh, the latest on this storm Actually, you could argue maybe it's two storms that might be strong to severe. So, um, let's see here. Located near Eureka back at 11 o'clock. Let's just make sure. 
So the storm they're talking about is already working out of the county and working into northwestern parts of Wilson County, which makes me wonder if Wichita is considering a warning per se. Well, I will say the, uh, the trend with this storm for the time being is actually a downward trend in terms of its strength, uh, which is good. We'll take it for sure. But it is a strong storm, quite a strong storm nonetheless, as it heads to Vertigris and nears Fredonia. In fact, it's a pretty strong storm continuing southeast at 40. But the strength of the storm, again, and verifying with the Weather Service in Wichita, since they cover this part of southeast Kansas, has come down. Wind gusts between 50 and 55 miles per hour and some nickel size hail. Certainly could be plausible with these bright reflectivity values um, over Vertigris and just about ready to approach, um, let's say, uh, US 400. Once you work away from the junction of 39 and start heading southeast toward Fredonia, these reflectivity values, even though they might be a bit of ways up from the ground, certainly suggest some um, heavy rain and some sizable hailstones trying to come on down as well. But just in case this decides to flare up once again, at least we've got still a good handle on the speed. I'm moving southeast at 40. And I just want to make sure I get the uh, angle of the storm motion and direction properly before I get you all an updated storm track. Um, let's, let's attack it this way. I want to draw the storm track like this and take it southeast, well, let's just say over the next hour or just about if the system will let me <laughs> draw on this track. Uh, that could be the potential up, oh, strike that. That direction looks pretty good. So let's say for Donia, if it's not on top of you now, it will be within the next minute, minute and a half. Uh, the small town of Cedar, 1141. Neotashe by 1146. We'll say uh, the town of Cherry by 1203. Centerville at 1210. Walton by uh, 1216. A very small community on the outskirts of Parsons, but Parsons per se could be seeing the storm come on in by 1220 so within the next hour it could be knocking on the door of Parsons that is if it maintains its forward speed at 40 miles per hour at least it has shown a bit of weakening it's not severe for now but as long as that severe storm watch is still in place something we're keeping a close eye on back over uh, the closer to the Joplin area the metro area per se again not seeing anything too alarming here. We got some lightning strikes showing up around uh, Gerard, Beulah, Pittsburgh, um, let's say near the intersection of 126 and 7 in southern parts of Crawford County, a lightning strike or two around Parsons, a little more lightning around Oswego and Chautauqua as you work toward the uh, Labette, Cherokee County line. But again, all of what you're seeing on the northwestern sides of the Joplin area. So all of this, it's not severe, but it is moderate to heavy rainfall. And of course, it's kind of strong storms as long as you've got lightning strikes in there. There's not many lightning strikes, but thankfully this is not showing any signs of strengthening in the short term. That's certainly good news. Now let's, before we try and wrap things up temporarily here, let's give one more good heads up for this storm continuing its track toward the southeast. Uh, let's just make sure that we're not seeing anything new from Springfield about that. And uh, okay, this storm has ramped up a bit. So I might wanna stay with this for a little longer than I want to, or was intending to rather, but we'll stick with it nonetheless, because even though it's kind of working out of our television market, when it comes to social media and streaming, there's no limits as to who we can cover. So this is for everybody watching now. If you are near Table Rock Lake, or if you know anybody that might get on to Table Rock Lake very soon, we want this to be a big heads up for everybody. In fact, I wanna push, get another uh, social media post ready here because what the storm has done, as it continues to work into a more slightly unst more unstable environment 
Look at what the storm's capable of now. Wind speeds up to 70 miles per hour, moving to the southeast, and now potentially back up to golf ball size hail. So this could produce some considerable damage. And again, if this storm holds at its strength, and we've seen it actually strengthen a bit since we last checked on it, if the storm continues as is, this can be a problem, could potentially be a problem for areas approaching Table Rock Lake and the lake itself. So again, we know temperatures have been warming up once again. We know it's getting closer to boat season again, but if by chance you know anybody that might be venturing out to, let's say, downtown Branson, the, the strip on Branson, the landing in Branson near Lake Taney Como, Table Rock Lake, Kimberling City, Silver Dollar City, other areas around Branson West, and other areas around Table Rock Lake, even working in the southeastern parts of Barry County, please get, get, get in touch with them however you can. Uh, phone call, text message, social media, tweet them, message them on Facebook, send them an Instagram message, carry your pigeon if you have to, because if the storm continues on this trajectory that it's been, with the strength that it's holding now, this could be a pretty nasty storm for the Table Rock Lake area. And something that we do not say very lightly here, but Doug and I are concerned about this storm, especially if there are people out on the lake. Uh, needless to say, uh, for those of you that are trying to turn on TV around Table Rock Lake, you got plenty of good TV stations that I'm sure that are on top of it. You got KY3, KSPR, and you have color, um, especially like I've I know the meteorologists over there for the time I've been down here they're good meteorologists they'll have you covered on the television side for sure since it's working into their territory now but as long as we're on the horn here too we we can do our part as well as long as this is moving to the southeast okay the storm has slowed down a little bit it was moving that 40 to 45 miles per hour but the storm has slowed down a little bit but still 35 miles per hour it is trying to track along for sure and you can see how as you loop over the past hour looked impressive back then and still does now and I actually want to stop it at this point here at 1128 because this is also what's a little bit alarming it may not look like much but from Springfield's perspective you can see a very thin band of reflectivity trying to come out of the thunderstorms that could very well potentially be outflow winds or wind gusts coming out of the storms and those could very well be wind gusts that could be pushing 60 to 70 miles per hour as it continues toward the uh, southeast at 35 miles per hour i didn't mean to clear the entirety of the information on the screen here for you but oh no there we go that's the uh correct warning here just to make sure everything's up to date there we go now still capable of 70 mile per hour wind gusts and at the very least uh golf ball size hail let's double check on the hail let's see my goodness those hail sizes certainly are popping up there especially on the eastern sides of aurora the system our system definitely suggests golf ball size hail with that as well so certainly leading to verifying this warning if not backing up why the weather service in springfield put that warning out so let's do another storm track on here then i'm going to hop off temporarily to make sure that we're all good behind the scenes and making sure we've got everything in place should additional storms try to flare up again as we go into the afternoon but this is far and away the strongest storm that we have on here in fact i want to take that track off because I want to include uh, the potential outflow um, coming from the storms because if that is indeed outflow that could be wind gusts trying to push 60 to 70 before the main storms really come into play here so if we take the south and east over the next uh, oh here I can adjust the track this way let's just take this out over the next hour to make sure we have the entirety of Table Rock Lake covered and it'll also help if I move this box to the east just so we can see the track in its entirety. Exeter, 1143. This is a storm that doesn't have 
very much, if any, in the way of low level rotation. But mid level rotation, with a good cold pool loft, that's an area of winds aloft that are really trying to come on down as, and acts as a uh, support mechanism to help keep the storm going, all leading to the potential for golf ball sized hail and 70 mile per hour wind gusts. Those are not wind gusts to take lightly. Those can cause quite a bit of damage and this definitely winds that you do not want to mess around with as this nearest Table Rock Lake. And even the uh, National Weather Service in Springfield is making sure that we get the word out to those for t around Table Rock Lake. Cassville, 1144. Shell Knob, 1157. Kimberling City, 1205. Branson, 1213. Hollister, 1217, Forsyth, 1221, and then Berryville by 1231. An additional way that we could look at this track concerning uh, Table Rock Lake, actually before we do that, just anytime I see some interesting radar returns here, I just want to make sure that we're not seeing anything alarming popping up. Um, even from storm relative velocity perspectives here, you could potentially argue a little something to watch um, for areas around Purdy and Cassville, but with the way I'm seeing things from the radar, the beam is shooting through quite a good hail core, so that, I think that might be a contaminated or a, a bad velocity return. I'm not really seeing a tornado threat trying to pop up in parts of Barry County. So I'm going to keep an eye on that and make sure that the weather service in Springfield isn't seeing anything too nasty with that as well. But as you can see, before we started to move on in, you can definitely see that the warning, that warning official now that covers Table Rock Lake. Let's be sure we get this out properly here. That is a severe thunderstorm warning and they are still maintaining golf ball size hail, the potential for up to golf ball size hail and 70 mile per hour wind gusts. This is for Western Taney County, South Central Christian County, Southern Barry County, and Southeastern Stone County as you work through the rest of Southwestern and eventually South Central Missouri. That is until 1230. And it's moving, it's picking up speed now again, Southeast at 50 miles per hour. And if you know anybody in Table Rock Lake or if you're watching our stream in Table Rock Lake and you're hearing the sirens outside, they have a limited purpose, but it's a good purpose if you're outside and if you're not paying attention to the weather. Emergency management out of Stone County is sounding the sirens for that wind threat approaching Table Rock Lake. So this is the official heads up from the National Weather Service now. We've been kind of giving our own heads up on this as well, but everybody now is giving as much heads up as possible for the Table Rock Lake area because heaven forbid we don't want to see anything terrible happen around Table Rock Lake. So if again you know anybody thinking about venturing out on the Table Rock Lake or if you know anybody on Table Rock Lake, get a hold of them in any way that you can. Tell them to get off the lake. Dock at the nearest point that they can. Just get off the lake. Get off any docks if they're metal for sure. Stay away from the water and let these storms pass before you go back and assess if they're going to venture out again. So, with that said, I want to take one different approach, excuse me, to uh, when this could get into the Table Rock Lake area. So, let's use a distance tool and put on the forward speed of 50 miles per hour. Let's go in a little bit tighter here and I'll tell you what just to make sure I want to take off the uh, the warning the polygon fills or the uh, one layer of the severe thunderstorm warning polygons to make sure I see all the branches and every part of Table Rock Lake so from the leading edge of the storms which I think is still showing some potential outflow boundaries around Jenkins we've got this close to shell knob within the next 12 minutes we got this near the northern and northwestern sides of Table Rock Lake within 13 minutes. Um, if you want to talk about the part of the storm around Cassville, we could have the far western parts of Table Rock Lake, east of Seligman, south of Shell Knob, within the next 10 to 20 minutes. And as far as the large hail is concerned, that part of the storm, oh, let me 
there's a good radar update let me make sure i get this properly here that may not come close to reed spring until we get into the next 16 minutes so just before we hit the noon hour and maybe other parts of table rock lake within the next 20 to 25 minutes so table rock lake if you know anybody around table rock lake they've got maybe 10 minutes to let's say between 10 to 15 maybe 20 minutes a heads up for them to if they're on the lake to get off the lake get off the water dock and just head inside and wake the storm out if they by chance don't get any big winds out of this they're going to get a tremendous amount of rain and hail out of this so that is the best heads up that we can get for now for the table rock lake area and one more quick glimpse before i temporarily hop off of the stream here and to make sure that we're good behind the scenes the other storms that we're watching have lost their severe strength for the time being so we're just keeping an eye on maybe some low-end strong storms trying to work through parts of cherokee county let's say a couple lightning strikes around weird scamming and trying to pick up again between columbus and uh, let's say baxter and maybe stopping short of old trees pitcher and cardin and then we've got just moderate to heavy rain northwest of there near Parsons, St. Paul, Erie, Chanute. And then a couple strong storms um, east and southeast of Eureka and Twin Grove. And a strong storm right over the heart of Wilson County. But it's just strong, but maybe some, let's say, dime to nickel size hail. And maybe some gusts near 50 to 55 from about Coyville down to about Fredonia and the Odeche. That is it for an update, everybody. Hopefully, we have given you the best that we can in terms of an update here. Uh, just keep it tuned here. We'll hop on again very soon with an update. And if we need to hop on sooner with additional warnings, we will do so. Stay safe out there.